So let's discuss fearlessness. Now, as I reflect on fearlessness, I want to point out fearlessness is not an absence of fear. Fearlessness is a response to fear. So we're going to kick things off by looking a bit at fear. Fear is a primal, instinctual, and often useful in, uh, instinctual survival response to a perceived threat. Our instinctual fear response allows us to react immediately to danger with a few immediate and conditioned responses. So you can fight, you can challenge the threat, you can run away from the threat, or you can get paralyzed by fear and do nothing and hope that the threat passes, which sometimes it will. Yay! It also turns out that fear and risk-taking are related. If you are forced to step out of your comfort zone, if, you're, if you have to get out of your sense of safety, you thereby take a risk and you are challenging your own instinctual fears by, by stepping away from safety. Now, in a very clinical way, I'd like to point out that fear starts in the amygdala. Science! <laughs> Brains! So this cross-section of the temporal lobe shows us one of the amygdala, which is a little almond-shaped lobe, and uh, almond, or it, amygdala means almond in Greek, and uh, there's a little nodule of hardware in your limbic system that initiates this fear response, this uh, fight, flight, freeze response, and then it also, furthermore, it regulates how we respond to fear. So your fear response can trigger from your own experience. You could be like, Ooh, I went down a dark hallway once, and I did not like what happened. I am fearful of that. We can learn from observation, like, oh, I saw my friend go down a dark hallway, and that did not end well for him. And since we're social creatures, we also learn from the experience of others, and we learn through shared storytelling. So we'd be like, ooh, my friend told me about a time he went down a dark hallway, and I'm afraid of that. So. There is learning involved with fears. Fears can be classically conditioned and reinforced, but mercifully they can also be unlearned and diminished by our capacity to learn. So good news, uh, things like xenophobia and racism, which are very much deeply rooted in irrational fear, they can be unlearned. So through exposure, through learning, through shared social experience, and through good storytelling and good uh, sharing of experience, we can learn to inhibit our fears through exposure. And all of this is guided by the amygdala. So these little nuggets, they kick off our emotional responses, such as fear responses, aggression responses, sadness responses. And then it also helps process how we learn from these emotional states. So what are we learning by getting kicked into this emotional state? And finally, the amygdala plays a big role in long-term memory. The emotional response to stimulus can inform future responses, thus uh, learning, we can learn behavioral patterns, like what you were afraid of and how you reacted can influence what your behavior pattern will be in the future when you see that same fearful or fearsome stimulus. Now, people with anxiety disorders have been observed to have a larger amygdala, which makes sense. If your fear processing is running on overtime, the, uh, the node will get bigger to deal with, with your constant fears and anxiety. So this is where I get to play neuroscience. And to in examine fear, fearlessness, and risk, I'm going to experiment on your amygdala. Don't worry, it won't hurt much. I'm going to show you Rorschach's ink blot number three. And don't call anything out. I just want you to briefly reflect and just think of the first thing that you see. Ink blot. OK, I'm going to ask you, before the call outs, Raise your hand if you see uh, two human or humanoid figures bowing towards each other. OK, a lot of you. Typically, uh, in regular populations, about 75% of respondents see human figures first. Now, did anyone notice a bow tie or a butterfly as their first? OK, a lot of you. So that is also the secondary response. Now for the rest of you, you want to call out, like, nothing like, oh, it looks like the time I walked in on my parents having, um, that's wrong. That is a wrong answer. Uh, what else do you see? What else do you see in this picture? Pelvis. pelvis. Okay, I've heard, I've heard pelvis and hips. What else? Birds. Birds. Steen. Wolf. Good news, everyone. You're the creative types. 
So in a study called Amygdalar Enlargement Associated with Unique Perception in 2010, they found that in a study of 100 participants, they measured the volume of the amygdala with, uh, with scans, and then they found that the people who had more creative responses to, to this test had larger amygdala volume. Huh. So can fear, taking risks, and, be creative, uh, and being creative be related? I certainly think so. I think being creative is a type of risk, and I think it takes bravery to be creative. So I think it's also brave and risky to see something or do something in a brand new way. So I'd like to, in my own interpretation of this, say that making art is very brave. So thank you, creative types. <laughs> but wait, didn't I just say that enlarged amygdalas are associated with anxiety disorders? Yes, but it turns out that people that do not have anxiety disorders, enlarged amygdala, amygdalas and this uh, enhanced processing of fears can have very positive resu results. So in the last study that I talked about, there's a connection with increased volume and creativity. Another study found that there's a correlation between an increased amygdala size and a larger social network. So maybe if you have an increased amygdala, you are creative and popular. So fear doesn't necessarily define someone, but how you respond to your fears does. You can process those fears and learn to negatively reinforce them, or you can process your fears and learn to be bold and take risks with them. So we are discussing fearlessness, which I am basing on, <laughs> on fear. Fear is very useful. Fear, fear helps us survive, but in the modern world, it depends what you do with it. Fearlessness, fearlessness is not the state of being without fear, but rather being propelled into action in spite of your fear and making calculated risks and brave decisions uh, while acknowledging your own instinctual fears. So making bold choices, being creative, being social, this involves facing your fears and doing what they tell you not to do, which is very brave. So tonight we have six stories of people who are extremely bold, extreme, that took extreme risks. Uh, and I would like to impart to you that stepping out of your safety can lead to you being extraordinary. So I'd like to ask you if your fears can inspire or motivate you. And I'd like to end on a quote by John A. Shedd, who very wisely pointed out that a ship in a harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. So I would like to raise a glass to being fearless, to, to taking risks, and kicking ass. <laughs>